Hello everyone, it's me, and today we will talk about Quick Change, Site Directed Mutagenesis by Strategy. Right, so this is a very simple process protocol that allows you to introduce mutations in your plasma DNA. Whether you want to cause deletions, insertions, uh, you know, etc. This is very simple, it's very straightforward, and is a very commonly used tool in uh, biomedical research. So, this is by Strategy, the uh, company that kind of developed this uh, quick change method. And it's very simple. You first construct mutagenic primers with the uh, insertion or deletion or whatever of your choice within the primers. And then you, you know, mix the primers and your you know, wild type plasma DNA in a PCR reaction, right? And then they'll start priming the whole entire plasmid. Now, because the polymerase cannot um, you know, connect you know the circular plasmid together. You know, the, it can't circulate DNA like that. You actually um, construct these nicked plasmids, right? Um, however, though, even though these plasma plasmids are nicked, they'll be able to completely um, ligate together, uh, forming you know the traditional um, f uh, diester phosphate bonds of you know DNA. With once you transform these nicked plasmids plasmids into uh, bacteria. So the bacteria machinery, machinery will repair this, uh, this system. So as you can see, it's very simple, only four steps involved, and basically the trickiest part is basically designing the primers themselves. So let's uh, go through an example to show you uh, what I mean. So again, I'm going to use the, uh, this DNA construct in PFAS back as my example. This is the same construct I used uh, for my uh, cloning tutorial videos and I figure I would just stick with this one. So, okay, um, for example, let's say for some reason or another I want to mutate this alanine. Okay, I don't to, let's say, aspartic acid because um, based on, let's just say, I know the, st the structure um, data of this uh, insert and let's just say um, I want to introduce an aspartic acid because I will know it will um, destabilize the structure and perhaps that will, you know, prevent it from binding to a certain receptor or whatever and that can lead to, you know, maybe as a potential, you know, drug competitor, uh, inhib inhibitor kind of, a, kind of a deal. So let's just say I want to mutate this alanine to aspartic acid, uh, you know, a negatively charged uh, residue. Okay, so how do I go about doing that within this plasmid? Well, what you want to do is first, okay, you want to identify the codons that you want to mutate, right? So GCG, I want to change that into aspartic acid. Now, aspartic acid, let me just look this up, codon table. I don't, I don't have this memorized or anything, but uh, give me one second just to look this up. What is the aspartic acid codon? Does anyone know, have been memorized? Hmm, <laughs> aspartic acid, aspartic acid. Sorry guys, I'm just kind of looking this up right now on my other monitor. Um, hmm. Aspartic acid, okay, here we go. Aspartic acid, we have, okay, GAU and GAC. So basically, in DNA, that will translate to uh, GAT or GAC. Okay, so let's just say we want to mutate GCG into GAT, okay, aspartic acid, GAT. So how do we go about doing that? Well, for these primers, for these quick change primers, you want to have primers that um, they have, you want to have at least 24 base pairs, I believe, or something around there, 24 base pairs. And then what I like to do is have 27, basically having uh, 12 uh, bases flanking either side of the mutation that you want to introduce. This, that, that's good. I mean, the protocol says that you want to have a mutation in the middle of your primer. So what I like to do is just say, okay, 27. So I want 12 this way. Um, okay, that's 12 right there, and then I won't have uh, 12 on the other side as well, right? So let's say 12 here, okay, 
and then um, which is right after the proline and then 12 in the other direction which would be let's see where would that be um, 12 right here so glycine so let's just highlight all this so we know this is right after the proline and there we go 27 so with our mutation that we want to uh, mutate this alanine in the middle so let's just say features new feature um, I'll say forward primer alanine to aspartic acid okay so here's my four primer that I want and then obviously the reverse primer would just be the reverse now what I want to do is uh, basically well the key thing about quick change right your four and reverse primers are basically at the same position because this it's not something because we're not amplifying something in the middle right in traditional PCR we want you know reverse primers and four primers at different parts of the DNA and what's between them is what we want to amplify right but for quick change that's not the case the case the quick change is that both primers are going to amplify the entire plasmid because we want the whole entire plasmid with just the mutation uh, you know at one of the areas so that's why the two primers are you know exactly the, pretty much at the same position so just for the sake of um, sake of explaining that I'm just going to hide the bottom I'm going to add another feature on the bottom I'm going to write uh, reverse primer alanine to aspartic acid just to indicate that both primers are at the uh, same position so let me just change the uh, color of this to blue I guess okay blue so again we want to uh, mutate this alanine into aspartic acid and we have our forward and reverse primers with 12 bases flanking the middle codon which is you know three bases making each primer exactly 27 bases in length so next is that we just want to create our primers right so let's just highlight this here so control copy and um so this is the forward primer again um five prime to three prime in here we go three prime like that and just to double check if that's right so gga and ends in ccc so gga ccc okay so that's correct now reverse primer let's see again we want to write from five prime to three prime end so reverse primer we have we're going to highlight from the bottom here and we're just going to go like this boom and control copy and let's see if this works so we have ggg and then ends in tcc do we have that ggg okay and it ends in tcc tcc okay so that's also correct so now we have forward and reverse primers right 27 bases in length and that's pretty much it for site directed mutagenesis. Oh, sorry guys, I completely forgot. Well, obviously this isn't, you know, we know what the mistake is, right? Because we haven't caused any mutation yet. Remember, while we've done, if we use these primers right now, all we would be doing is amplifying the original plasmid. Of course, we need to get rid of this alanine, right? So GCG in the middle. So CGC, GCG, CTC. So let's look for that. Mm, it's easier if I just kind of separate these out. I hate reading it directly like that. It always annoys me. So, okay. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's right here, right? This is the alanine, GCC. And like I said before, we want to mutate this into aspartic acid, which can be G-A-T, or it can be... Uh, um, GAC. So let's just use GA, GAT. So this is four primers. And then reverse primers. Um, so we'll separate these out. Here we go. GCG, um, right here, GCG. <clears throat> and uh, that's the reverse primer for the alanine, right? GCG, right. 
So GCG and then the reverse will be CGC. And then remember to write the mutation also in the five prime to three prime direction. So it'll be A, right? Yes, A, T, C. There we go. And here we will have the uh, aspartic acid mutation. And that's pretty much it with designing these primers. Very straightforward. You just want to make sure to double check it. So let's double check it then. So GCG, right, CGC. Um, that's exactly what we have, right? Then we got, we got rid of it. We replaced with GAT, and the reverse will be ATC. So that's pretty much it, I would say. Um, um, yeah, and I mean the last thing you want to do is check the TMs, of course, and stuff. I mean they suggest TM TM should be above like 68 degrees or whatever. But honestly, if you get something around 68 degrees, I think it'll be all right. Just because the protocol they use, the reactions, you know, requires a higher uh, um, uh, annealing temperature. So that you that you they want a higher uh, melting temperature as well for your primers. And they suggest that your primers should end in C's and uh, G's, G's and C's, and which these primers do, G, C, G, C. So that's also a consideration um, to, to have. So considerations, I guess, would be, uh, this, this is all in the protocol, by the way. This, this, this is all in the protocol. So, I mean, if you read through the protocol, it'll tell you everything. But, you know, because I'm just making this video, I, you know, the short version of it is that, um, you want to uh, end primers um, in G's and C's, and um, you want to have uh, the TM above like 68 degrees, right? Something like that. I, I could be wrong. It could be even higher than this, but I think it's above 68 degrees. But um, again, I could be mistaken. Actually, I'll just double check right now. What does this say? Is it above 68 degrees? Um, let's see. What does this say? Oh, no, see, I was wrong. Above 78 degrees Celsius, actually. And, you know, they say between 25 and 45 bases in primers with flanking regions in both ends. So, again, um, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. And you know should terminate in one more G and C basis. What I said. So sorry, not 68 degrees, 70 degrees C. Have two above 79 degrees C, 78 degrees C is or equal, you know, or around this area. You don't have to be extremely picky about this. And the last consideration is what I mentioned earlier: is, um, have the uh, desired mutation, you know, uh, in in the middle, you know, in the middle of primer set and uh, this will be the same thing you if you want to do multiple mutations or you want to do a do a deletion you know you'll just get rid of it basically the middle and you know not have anything in there and will cause you know a deletion of the amino acid so you know, so, you know it's very flexible like that but that's pretty much it that's um quick change by strategy very uh straightforward and simple i think and yeah, if you guys have any questions or concerns, go ahead and post your comments below. Otherwise, I think this pretty much covers uh, this video. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.